Hey ya! My name is Sarah, and as y'all can see by the title, today's book review is on The Sinner by G.R. Ward. New book in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. Ah! This book! Right off the bat, non spoilers, 5 out of 5 stars. It's a BDB book, people, and I know. I did that last one on the novella and they got its first low star on the scale, but this one definitely deserves a 5 out of 5 stars. Our main couple is Sin, who is a member of the Band of Bastards, and as we know from the um, Black Dagger Legacies book, we figured he has a little problem. It's called a Teleman, and he, 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 he has those, you know, killing tendencies. And our other main character is Joe Early. People, we know who she is. Joe is that human that's been, you know, going around places, showing up where, you know, the Brotherhood have been doing their battles with the Lessers, and we know that she is about to go through her transition because she is a half-breed! And possibly related to Manny Butch and Rat. Oh dear. And from what we gather from the last books, we know that a certain demon has escaped her prison and is now walking around Caldwell, so we are Literally, this is the book that literally does the crossover. I love Sin so much, even though he has that murder tendency or whatever, but when he is with Cho, I'm just like, oh, he is such a precious puppy. I am a sucker for when the humans find out about vampire world and society, so meaning I liked how Cho was putting the pieces together and how she was getting closer to, you know, figuring out about the vampire society and, you know, parts of herself that she was, um, you know, not really a part of and how everything works. I'm just a sucker for all that, especially when they come together. I'm like, oh my god, this is beautiful. Another point of view we get is Bush because, hello, we're getting closer to the end of the whole lesser society and everything, and we know the Omega is on his last leg, so we're also worried about Butch. And what we didn't know was that we get more point of views that I did not see coming, and I was like, oh my god, people, are we really doing this? All I can say this was a great addition to the BDB world and I honestly am dying for the next book because uh, J.R. Ward announced who it was and the name of the cover and we're just going back to our roots people. And that's as far as I can get into the non spoilers. This is like book 18 in the series that we um, hope never ends ever ever ever. And yeah. This Sinner by J.R. Ward. 5 out of 5 stars. Bye, non-spoilers! <laughs> Spoilers. Now, we know that Joe has been, you know, hanging around places that vampires and lusters have, you know, visited in previous battles, and we know that V knows about she's about to go through the transition, but seriously, V, why haven't you brought Joe in or made more people aware that she's about to go through her transition? I mean, because she shows up in a place where lessers were, apparently, with Joe, I mean with Butch and V showing up as well, he's like, how many times am I going to erase this female's memory? And we're like, first of all, how many times has he erased her memories? And second of all, V, she's about to go through her transition. Bring Joe in, and let's see what happens after that. I mean, that would solve so many problems. I'm just saying. Another thing, while we, I believe it was like chapter four, and I was ready to fight, was <laughs> our favorite evil OCD brunette demon, Davina, is back, and she's just wandering around Caldwell with no real motivation because she knows the creator figured without her lover there, she's not really going to do much harm. And for those of you who have not read the Fallen series, here is a um, quick wrap up of those previous books. We have Jim, who was once a human but died and became a fallen angel and finds out that he is part of this whole grand scheme of things to where the whole world with evil and good are fighting over and these last seven souls will determine the fate of the world. And his boss is Nigel the Douche, who is another angel who is really a douchebag. And we have Colin his savior, who is all glorious and everything. And we have two other angels that I completely forgot the name of their names because they did nothing in the whole series. 
Then we have Eddie and Adrian, the best best friends in the whole entire world who are also angels and they work with Jim to try to collect all these seven souls before Davina, this evil OCD demon who has a weird, mysterious and creepy crush on Jim and they must defeat her by winning all the seven souls in order to save the world. And some things don't go well, Jim falls in love with a girl named Sissy who is being tortured by Davina but he manages to rescue her in return of other things going on with these soul battles. Davina gets more really possessive over Jim and Matt having a weird love thing for him and all in the end Jim wins, heaven wins, good wins, Jim passes on to heaven with Sissy at the side, Davina goes down to the soul, the well of souls and we believe all is good until you know, that son of a bitch throw finds Davina's book, resummons her in the most creepy way ever and she is back. And that is the end of The Fallen Angels. Yay! Moving on. I love Sin's cousins, Balthazar, Sefer, and Siphon. I mean, there is Sin out there getting ready to challenge the sun on. And they're like, hey, we're about to have a barbecue, dude. I forgot to bring the marshmallows. Man, I hope it doesn't burn my skin. I was just working on this tan, dude. And Sin is like, uh, go inside. And I'm like, no, we will go in when you go in. Hey, can you make sure you get those crackers? I really want to have those s'mores. Hey, don't forget the chocolates. And of course, you know, Cor comes out and be like, what the hell are y'all doing? Get back in here. But he's more, you know, angry about that. And they all come inside. And Sin, I know you have this weird death wish because of your talent. And you have this urge to go kill people and everything. And it has you doing these side jobs, which he is doing in this book. Which leads to him meeting up to Joe because he's working for the mafia in a way. But either way, yeah, I know you struggle with wanting to just end it all but come on sweetie you have these amazing cousins with you they are there to talk to and again yes uh sin does side jobs as a hitman and one of his targets ends up skinned alive that joe is covering so she also gets tied up in the web of you know the mobsters and possible death and we also get another murder with similar things minus the skin peeling and it's just really really weird because sin like how he did and the BDL book where he was taking you know all the blame for stuff that he didn't do he's still doing the same thing because even though the guy that got skinned was his target he's still taking the blame even though he didn't kill him which I was really really confused because apparently Dafina was the one that took out the hit first and I, that was just a little confusing at the time I was really surprised that J.R. Ward actually really, 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 really went down to our roots and um, did a point of view of a lesser named Mr. Epp who really didn't know what he was signing up for until he was forced to turn into a lesser and not just a lesser but the four lesser and he kind of smart. He's trying to rethink of what's going on, what happened and when he finds out what's going on he's like really? Do I really want to do this? Honest to God, I was actually waiting for whenever we get a scene where a lesser would be like, mm, I don't want to do this. I'm going to go my own way and if I, if I have to, if y'all make me, but whatsoever. I was really, I found myself really, 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 really excited about these lesser point of views. And seriously, how many times is Joe going to cross paths with the Brotherhood? Because again, she's at a crime scene, different, completely different crime scene. And she just like casually looks to her left and Alessa like runs right by her as well as Butch. And there's that one moment they're like, I know you. Even though Joe had her memory erased. Like seriously, how many times is she going to cross paths with the Brotherhood? But then she also crossed paths with Sin and um, our two lovers meet. Right when Sin meets Joe, that Talman becomes like completely obsolete. Even I forgot it was there at all because she just becomes his world. And I'm like, oh my god. And he's also a cute little puppy. And he saves her when they're being chased by a spotlight. I'm like, oh my god, these two are going to be beautiful together. And this is where mm -hmm, Dafina starts realizing what's going on because she senses Bush when he's inhaling a lesser. And she's like, he's my twin. Because she feels a familiar presence inside her that connects with him. I'm like, no, Davina, stay the F away from my boys. Because V shows up, helps Butch in a situation, and she's so pissed off that she's willing to go kill V until she gets a whiff of what them are. And she's like, they're like, like, they're like not men, they're vampires. God, that's hot. No, Davina, 
stay away from my boys or we will have a problem. Now, while well, Butch, of course, is um, investigating these deaths because apparently Balthasar said this is something that Sin would do, but then again, Butch easily sees through this after he confronts Sin about the two murders and it's like, um, Balthasar, why do you keep telling me Sin's possibly able to do this stuff? Are you trying to want him to get killed? Which is really confusing because Balthasar, You've always been taking care of Sin, but why do you keep assuming he's in doing all these steps? Well, while that investigation is going on, um, Sin is like so precious. He's like a little puppy. Honestly, God, every time I saw him, he was like so nervous, so awkward. Every time he was with Joe, especially when he goes to find her, she works at the news place and finds out that she is the reporter that the mobster wants him to take care of. And I was like, oh my god, he is so cute. Precious is always asking what does she want and then, like, he's okay with whatever she wants. And he's like, oh, and he's so precious and awkward and adorable. He's like a little, he's like a boy on the first date with a girl he really, really likes and he doesn't know how to act. It is so precious, especially when they go get dinner because he asked if she was hungry and she's like, it's not a date, is it? And he's like, I don't know. He is, oh my god, every time Joe and Sin interacted, I just squealed. I got to throw that reminder out there that Davina, keep your shady little fingers off of Butch because apparently she meets him when he's alone and she does her little mind thing to um, trick him, thinking, oh yeah, we we're best friends. We knew each other back in childhood, back when his sister was still alive. And, oh, Davina, you're just talking to Butch. You're treading on the line a little bit. But as long as you don't interfere, especially with Butch's life, with his mates, I'm willing, I'm willing to let this slide, but... Keep your shady little fingers off of Butch and don't you dare harm any of the brothers. Things get a whole lot more interesting because we actually have a whole lot of interactions with our deities. One being the Omega because Mr. F gets caught by Quinn in a way and the Omega shows up and Butch shows up. And let's just say I was really, really freaking out because the Omega, even though he's all powerful, even though he's still dying off, um, he still throws this weird magic at Butch and I'm still freaking out even though he's able to take it. And then here comes Sin and he tackles it. He tackles the Omega. I'm like, oh my God, someone's about to die because seriously, you cannot, you know, touch that evil presence without being infected by yourself. And I'm like, oh, oh my God, V. V, get here right now. I swear, every time the Omega showed up in this book, I freaked out. Because even though he's slowly dying, even though Mr. F ran off but still got punished in the end, and he, the Omega managed to disappear, I'm, so, I'm like, this is still a deity who still has some power, who can still do harm. People, be careful when you approach. And now with Sin, who tackled the Omega and got some of that evil into him, but V was there. V got there just in time, and he not only took care of him, but he was there to take care of Butch as well. We see Sin at a very vulnerable state, which we get to see a little bit more since we get flashbacks, which are really, really sad. And place to part of his characteristics to this day as to why he's like this, how he developed his talamine. Like we found out in the BDL book, but we get more in depth. And so after that confrontation with the Omega, he's really, really vulnerable. And the first person he goes to is Joe, who takes her back, takes him back to her place and she is there for him. And Sin, I'm sorry to tell you this, but um, you like Joe because I swear, if I thought he was precious to begin with, this scene just like set me over the edge. Over by the door, Joe and a teenage human male both froze. Then the delivery boy's eyes popped wide and his hands went up. Joe, who was bent to the side and holding a pizza box awkwardly, looked like she would have done the same if she could have. Then her eyes dropped down. And not to his weapon. As they peeled wide, she was clearly shocked at his nakedness. I just dropped the pizza, the teenager stammered. I swear, that was all. Joe moved slowly, writing herself. I was taking the change from him. At the same time, th th that box had slipped off his hands. Sin breathed in and smelled absolutely no fear at all coming from his female. Putting his weapon down to his thigh, he nodded. Y you want a refund? The delivery boy asked. I can give you a refund. I mean, I messed up. Whatever she, go whatever she wants goes, Sin said as he stepped back into the bathroom and shut the door. Hanging his head, 
He wondered what the hell was wrong with him. Oh, wait. He knew that list all too well. And one of the entries was that a gangster had ordered Sim to kill the fairy female he had insisted on going home with. Come on! Can anyone not say that they imagined Sin leaning against that door with that blush on his face? I'm like, Sin? You love her? You just said she's your female? You are adorable and you go. Panning over a little bit to Mr. F, he did get punished a little bit, so... Am I really actually feeling emotions? For this lesser because i might be getting my wish about lesser going up against the omega but apparently that was not omega influenced enough of fear to get mr f to actually call in the last of the remaining lessers and to make a formal meeting to see how many there are left in the society which is like okay i guess even though we find out later on there's only 14 but i actually had this whole wish that you know this lesser would be like i'm not doing your bidding omega go screw yourself bye bye but no i guess the omega just knew how to apply enough pressure to get the way he wants as for joe and sin i swear our baby boys are romantic because after realizing his emotions are so overwhelming for Joe, he does the best thing ever. You know that mobster that hired him to do the job that Davina apparently did, so he went to go he was hired to go take care of Joe. Well, hmm. <laughs> Uh, Sin, again, you are romantic because he goes to kill the mobster to protect her. Who said chivalry isn't dead? Now, I believe this was after the interaction with the Omega, because I think they just told Wrath, and they're doing a formal meeting together, you know, just to see how much is going on, and Butch let the whole Brotherhood know, we're almost done with the war because I don't feel that many left. Well, we are once again reminded why we don't want to piss Wrath off. I mean, of course, the brothers' reactions are expected because, you know, Wrath with his language and with his loud voice, well, this is all they did. And the sense and the silence that followed, Butch looked over at V, who looked at Tor, who slowly shook his head back and forth. So all Wrath has to do, you know, to get the Brotherhood in order and silence as the little duck links is, you know, to raise his voice and remind them that he is a king and even I am scared. But again, this was just a nice reminder on how powerful Wrath really is, even though he is blind. We also get another deity cameo from, at first I thought it was like, oh my god, but apparently Butch went to church to, you know, just find himself and he had a moment with the scribe virgin who again left her position off for last year and disappeared and we know she's been walking around as boo and everything but she actually went to go see butch i was like oh my god i feel cleansed i feel holy and she lets information that pertains to the prophecy that i'm surprised that the omega had to do that dot 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 and so we find because people this whole book, people were worried if Butch died, then the whole prophecy about getting rid of the lessers would not come true. The whole thing about the prophecy, people, okay, yes, Butch inhales the lessers, the Omega's power, but it's through V that they can officially get rid of it because he helps clean Butch, meaning, you know, all that energy isn't contained within him. So without V, Butch would probably most likely die, and if the Omega had figured that out, well, we could be in trouble. So now it's turned on V that he has to stay home. And of course people start agree with him, but Butch is adamant about this. V, you gotta stay home. And throughout this whole book, you know, I was happy. I forgot about a certain someone and everything. And then all of a sudden Butch takes a turn and then there's someone on the ground who is harmed or hurt or both. And <laughs> it's the Vina and she's putting on her act and I'm like okay let him take you to the hospital and be done with it and she's like can you take me home master why did you summon me this time get everything ready we are about to leave to Codwell master if this is not pertaining to the Holy Grail war I don't see why <laughs> I'll go get my things ready Dinfina takes Butch to her place and I'm like oh my god this can go bad in so many ways. We know what happens when men enter her domain. Nothing good happens. But Davina lets him go. And Butch does return because he's starting to get a little weird thing in his mind. And luckily V is with them. And they realize something's going on because they go back to the place. And uh, nothing's there officially. And 
V looks up Butch's phone and they see the dot is going everywhere with the tracking system like who was he really with? Davina, I am coming after you because you messed with my boys! As we're getting closer to, I say the middle to the end of the book, we get an interaction that I was completely shocked about between the Scrap Virgin and the Omega and I gotta say, the Omega's got sarcasm, people. So they met up at a library and the scribe version picked the spot and the Omega wasn't really happy about this and their banter was kind of beautiful. The Omega stopped, the draping that covered his features moving around to face her. Why must we always meet here? When you were allowed to choose the site, you picked a morgue. A chuckle came from underneath the dirty white hoodie. I did. And then the murder scene. To be fair, I was working that night. And finally, a car accident. That was a per that was perfectly appropriate. The Omega shrugged. Indeed, Father always always say we should uh, do more things together. I mean, okay, we never really got a real interaction with the Omega, unless he was being all evil, dominating everything. But come on. I swear, this man's got a little bit of sarcasm. Now, apparently the Omega didn't know that the scrap version had resigned, but apparently what she did with Butch, uh, Ome the Omega is calling that as a rule break because apparently they have rules about influencing the creation's, you know, decisions, and the Omega's gonna go take that to their father. I'm like, oh no, this can go bad, or this can be good, or I don't know. Either way, the scrap version and the Omega's eyes broke the rules, so if we knew what happened in the Fallen Angels series about breaking rules, we know that's a bad thing. But we also find out a little bit something else about the Omega because I am all for this son of a bitch dying and ending and everything, but this is where I got a little emotional. People will be like, Sarah, why? He is the root of all evil. He should die and perish and everything. Well. Oh, okay, okay. He has a little sarcasm, so now I know a little bit about him, but now after reading this, I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna miss him. You should know something, the Omega said quietly. I deliberately never went after fishes. I have known all along that he could, and I am precisely acquainted with how much his elimination could of be of benefit to my position and survival, but I declined to involve him. The scribe virgin looked across the banister. You must, I must say, this is unexpected. He is family, after all. He is my blooded relation through you. And it is, as I stated, there is a bit of your goodness in me. You have my gratitude, she murmured. All, alas, this means you gave yourself a disadvantage for no reason. You did not have to go unto the destroyer and plant the seeds you did. Your birth ones have always been off limits to me. <coughs> okay, the Omega's got slight honor whatsoever and everything. But I'm like, oh my god. He must die still, but I will miss him now. Oh, <laughs> let's get to the next scene. Now, because um, Sin's been following Joe around, she, cause of, she told him about her little, you know, hobby about the supernatural and everything. They go back to the site where Mr. F apparently was there gathering the rest of the lessers. And, you know, push comes to shove. She sees his talent inside. He's also protecting her, meaning that's a completely deadly duo. And the lessers are dead and everything. But the brothers do show up and they have to do a cleanup. Well, Joe is still there. She does the whole Twilight thing by saying, Say it! And Sin says, Vampires, because she realizes that they're vampires. The thoughts that she has been losing, the, she realizes that pinpoints to the vampires messing with her memories. But she meets many. And Butch! And I'm like, family reunion! And we also, back at the Brotherhood, we get confirmation that she is related to Manny. And also connected to Butch, officially, meaning she's connected to Wrath. And even though Manny says his father is dead, I don't believe that whatsoever. Their biological father, who is mysteriously related to Wrath, is around there looming somewhere and we need to catch before any more, you know, cousins of Wrath show up. And, you know, Sin does confirm that Joe is about to go through the transition and that's not good and even though she wants him to be the one she takes the fame from because she trusts him, she knows him more, he basically begs Balthasar because he, Balthasar knows Sin cares so much about um, Joe and he will not harm Balthasar. He completely trusts Balthasar to do this process. And Sin also has a moment after realizing he, he he's just done. He's done fighting because 
Tor shows up wondering when he's going to be back on rotation. He's like, I'm done fighting because he, he realized he could have been a better person or anything. And with Joe being his life, even though there's a possibility she could leave his life, he's like, I'm just done. I'm done being this that I am and everything. I am just done fighting. I'm like, Joe, your man is turning over a new leaf for you. Oh my god. And you know how we're having these flashbacks that are pertaining to Sin's past? Well, V actually looked into the female that was always good to Sin, that he saved her and her little brother from his father from harming, and she gave him her fame when he went through his transition. Well, apparently she married an aristocrat, and she had family and everything, and Sin said at least they married for love, and V tells him that female tied in the rates with her family. I'm like, um, V, I know you're being a little a little butthead right now calling him out as to why he's not joining his, his, the brothers and the bastards in the last battle apparently and everything but either you want him to go over the edge and release his full talent on everyone or you just want to break him I don't know why don't you go get Lassiter to put you in another bubble and think about what you did because Lassiter did do that to get him back to the mansion but seriously I were you trying to make a point because I have a feeling he was but that's like a make or break moment. We do get the remaining lessers because now there's only four, three regulars, one four, and the Brotherhood are like doing everything. They're like, okay, we're about to end this until Butch gets this feeling that something's coming. And he tells the brothers to leave because even V had a vision. He told him to keep the cross close to his heart and everything because it will save him. But it's like, and the entire city goes black. And this ominous presence shows up, and the Omega is there! I want like, yeah, we can take him on, but, um, this is Omega 2.0 because Father, the Creator, deemed what the Scarf version did was a breach of the rules, and so he told the Omega where to find the hearts in the tomb! That means all those hearts of the previous lessons from generations gave him a power boost! Me, oh my god, he knocked out the brothers! He's taking Butch on by himself as if it's nothing, and Butch is powerless. Literally, he is powerless against him. And then Joe shows up, ironically, and she gets harmed because even the Omega's like, oh, a half sibling, let's invite her to the party. And he harms her, and Butch manages to get a slice in, but the Omega is shoving all of this darkness into him. I'm like, oh my god, V, no, V can't be here. But even though the Omega said he would harm him, I'm like, oh my god, right now he's all powerful. We don't know what's going on. Oh my god, this is going bad so much. Help, I use it to make. Help, oh my god, this was intense, people. I almost had a heart attack, as you can see. But at the very last moment, because Butch feels himself dying. He thinks the brothers are dead. He doesn't know what happened to Joe. He's about to die. And then all of a sudden, we get that moment where the main character in the anime series who's been hiding their ability this whole time steps between the path of destruction and their comrades and shows how big of an OP character they really are and does the whole hand stop, stopping the whole thing and is slowly pulling it in. Davina shows up and she absorbs the Omega. Oh, and she's wearing a cross on her jacket. And I'm like, oh my God. Davina, you get a pass. Caster, yes master, we fight for another day. You and your dramatic moments. Davina absorbs the Omega and she says, oh, I'm his little sister. What? I thought Davina was a demon. I did not think she was related to the scribe, virgin, or the Omega. And because she absorbed his energy, that means she's the new evil. Hey, but she is an opportunist. She says, I'm not like my sibling. Wolfen, vampire, human, they're all equal opportunists. So, um, they, I'll kill all of them. Again, we get that subtle little hint about the Wolfen. But, you know, Butch thanks her. She says, I'll see you around in part ways. Okay, Davina, I'm, laying, I'm willing to let you slide. Because not only are the brothers actually just fine, they're knocked out. You saved Butch. You took care of the Omega. You're Okay, we'll have this moment today. As for Mr. F, he has an honorable death because he just gives himself to Butch. He's like, just let this be over, man. And he is officially the last lesser to be gone. So that battle between the lessers and the Omega are officially over in book 18. Now, let's just hope we have more 18 books to go where we're fighting Davina people. Oh, and Sin does show up at the last minute 
and he sees Joe, but remember that mobster? He killed, well, the mobster's son wants revenge, so he, he, he wounds Sin, but because Sin gave Joe amazing lessons about aiming for the body, she shoots the guy and saves Sin. So I was like, hmm, this sounds so familiar. I'm thinking, you know, a sale and his man, a sola, I don't know, sounds a little familiar, but hey, she saves Sin as well. And she goes through the transition that, you know, Sin assists her in, and she makes it through! Yay! We all real happy. Now the book kind of ends off in a true part kind of way because Rath, after calling Joe his cousin and everything, he actually does have a moment with the scribe virgin which was really teary moment because they have a conversation heart to heart because they're kind of more friends than king and former deity and she even says I've been with your mate this whole time because like the cat really and I swear to God because he is so worried about um, LW and everything that one split moment, the scribe virgin gives him back his sight and he sees his son for the very first time. And he sees Beth and George and he knows this moment won't last, but this was a gift that the scribe virgin bestowed to him. And I was like, oh my god, this was like, this was so beautiful. Oh my god. Come on, people, rats for that one moment he gets to see his whole family all together once more before, you know, he goes dark again. But it's like, this was so beautiful. And the second part of, like, this complete, the complete ending was Davina overlooking the city and a white dress on, like, her older brother's, you know, robe and everything. She's like, until she finds Mr. Right, because after those heart-to-heart -heart conversations she had with Butch, um, she's be, she'll be marrying herself to Codwell until she finds that one guy, so she's going to always be wearing that dress. And she thinks she's going to start, you know, hell and everything, but I, this was the best ending in this whole book. This whole book, I loved it and everything, but the ending was just, Mwah! But there is something on the other bridge, standing with feet planted and body braced. Defina narrowed her eyes. It was a male, dressed in, were those hot pink zebra tights, and was that a shirt? And what was that shirt? Was that Barney? Jesus Christ, she spat. All at once, from behind those broad shoulders, a set of um, gossamer wings extended up outward as blonde and black hair spooled loose from um, some kind of tie. No, it wasn't J.C. Lassiter. The fallen angel. As Tafina narrowed her eyes and her temper rose, he smiled at her and lifted one of his hands with an elaborate, with a, um, elaborate, I can't speak, show, elaborate show. He blew her a kiss and turned that palm around and extended his middle finger at her. And thus the next generation of conflict was born. Thank you, Lassiter, for displaying all of our feelings towards Davina. Thank you very much. At least the ending didn't go as how I imagined it would, which I would have completely um, blown the roof off of where I live and gone ballistic and uh, raised hell on my own, but this was still beautiful. <laughs> Davina, you think that you're going to get away with everything, but no. The fairy angel you set, set loose the bubonic plague on, but still survived, is now your opponent. And that's the end of my spoilers. I loved this book. It's now one of my favorites in the BDB world. Joe and Sin, they are so precious. Sin is now precious. He is now uh, my baby boy that must be protected at all times. I know there's other members in the Brotherhood that I care about, but they can take care of themselves. But Sin, he literally was discovering himself and he found himself and, you know, with Joe and everything, he realized that he could, in a way, be a hero and not a sinner. Because that's like the whole take on this whole book. Especially when Butch was talking to Davina about saying everyone's been a sinner once in their life, you know. It just depends on how you take things from there. Joe, who has been searching so much for her family, she now has biological brother through um, Manny and also related to Butch and Wrath. So she has this family that she's wanted for so long and she's also determined to like you know figure out about her biological mother which is kind of an interesting story I am still holding out the theory that the you know um, father of now Joe Manny and Butch is still out there I don't believe he is dead I believe he's still out there Davina why do you have to tease us about the whole goddamn wolfen thing but at least we might be getting answers in the next book I don't know I think
think Jerry would also mention something about the coffins. I'm just saying, but we better get head sex in the next book because this is driving me up the walls. Lavina is now our big and bad, but I know how to take real good care of her. Just, I'm going to let Lassiter deal with her for a little bit. And I am just waiting for the day where two people riding Harley Davidson's just strolling through the mist surrounding the Brotherhood's mansion pulls up to the front and be like, hey, we're looking for someone by the name of Lassiter and a dog mysteriously and humanly points directly to Lassiter. I am waiting for that day to happen. It, again, it better happen in the next book. Again, this was a great addition to the Black Dagger Brotherhood series, book 18, I believe, in this whole series. And I just hope we continue on. I don't care how long the story drags out. I love this world. I love its characters. I love the spin-off series. And I can't wait for more books in those book series. But I just, I just love this world so much. Joe and Sin, they were precious together. Sin is now a precious boy. Must be protected at all times. Last turn, Davina are going to have their rounds. And... There are many mysteries heading towards Cabo that we better get answers for. This scenario by J.R. Warden. New book in the BDB series. 5 out of 5 stars. My name is Sarah and bye!